Hey guys, uh, great to be back with you all again today. We're going to be talking about problem solving today. And we're going to be talking about a, a wide variety of skills, really. Uh, we're going to be talking about 3.4a and k, and 3.5a and b. And that's problem solving with all operations, basically what it is. And um, the I can statements is uh, I can choose the correct operation to solve a word problem, and I can use the correct strategies to solve uh, to, pro to problem solve. So uh, we're going to look at some of the vocabulary. Uh, since we're using all operations, that would be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are the four operations we use uh, in math. And uh, we have uh, for uh, addition, we have add in uh, are the two numbers we put together to get our sum, which is our answer. And minuend and subtra subtrahend uh, and difference. Uh, difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Uh, there's a community property of addition. That means I can switch the numbers around and still get the same sum. Uh, that's not a fact with subtraction, though. Uh, there's specific order. We always start with a larger number in third grade and take away a smaller number from that to get a, to get a whole number or a positive number. Uh, multiplication vocabulary. You know, it's factor, factor, those two numbers we put together in our multiplication to get our product. And there's a community property of multiplication, which means we can switch numbers around. Five times four is also 20. And uh, division vocabulary, uh, dividend, divisor, quotient. Quotient's the answer to, to a division problem. And uh, we cannot switch around. I cannot say that five divided by 40 equals eight. That would not be a true statement. So there's a specific order way we uh, divide things, just like subtraction. They're very similar. I uh, have a few videos we're going to watch um, uh, about, uh, about these skills. Uh, we'll watch one of Aaron's videos talking about how to solve uh, problems using different operations and stuff. So let's go ahead and get ready for those videos. Oh no, Moby. It's our turn to make sandwiches for the soccer team. We totally forgot. There are eight players, and each one gets a sandwich. That's eight sandwiches. Each sandwich needs two slices of bread. How many slices do we need all together? To solve any problem, first you have to understand it. How can you understand a word problem? Try repeating the problem in your own words to help you understand. Right, Moby. We want to know how many slices of bread are needed to make eight sandwiches. You may want to underline or circle important information in the problem and underline the question. Look for key words that give clues about which operation to use, like addition or subtraction. The next step is to make a plan. How do you plan to solve a word problem? A strategy is a plan for solving a problem or reaching a goal. You can use one strategy or a few different ones. You can draw pictures, or you can use models or counters. You can even act out the problem. You can also make a table or chart or write a number sentence to help you solve. As long as you solve the problem correctly, you can use whatever strategy you want. Find the one that works best for you. After you plan your strategy, you try it out. I'm going to draw pictures. Let's see. There are eight players, and each gets two slices of bread. Now I count up all the slices. We need 15 slices of bread. How can you make sure you solved the problem? After you solve, look back at the question to make sure you answered it. 
We wanted to know how many slices of bread we need to make eight sandwiches. I think we need 15 slices. You're right, Moby. You should always check your work. Hey, I made a mistake in my drawing. That's okay, Moby. Mistakes happen. That's why you need to check over your work. We need 16 slices of bread. This loaf costs three dollars. I'm paying with a five dollar bill. How much change should I get back? First, understand the problem. I need to know how much money I should get back. Second, make a plan to solve. I'm going to use mental math as my strategy. I have a $5 bill, which is equal to five $1 bills. The bread costs $3. That means I should get $2 back. Now I need to check my work. I can write a number sentence to check. $5 minus $3 is equal to $2. Remember, when you come across a word problem, just follow these steps. First, understand the problem. Next, make a plan to solve it. Then, solve the problem. Finally, check your work. If your plan doesn't work, that's okay. You can just make another plan to solve the problem. Moby, we better make these sandwiches. What kind did you make? Mayonnaise, raisins, and cardboard? Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the third grade concept of multi-step problems that involve multiplication and division. This is standard 3.4K in the great state of Texas and we're using number 19 of the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, and then unpause it. Let's look at our answers together. So it looks like we have a garden, and I'm just gonna draw a big garden over here. It's always good to draw a picture if you can. And we've got two different types of vegetables. So we have five rows, of 16 carrot plants in each row. So this is going to be a multiplication problem because we've got five rows of 16 carrots each. And then they just give us the spinach plants, 72. So how many vegetable plants are there in the garden? This is not meant to be a trick because vegetable includes both the carrots and the spinach because it says up here there are two different vegetable plants Every once in a while, they'll give you a problem where you need to exclude one of the numbers because it's not a vegetable, because it's a fruit tree or something like that, but this isn't that trick. We just uh, need to add these two totals, and the problem is, is we have one total right now, 72. This other one, the carrots, that is not a total. So let's just pretend that it's about half and half. I have no idea if it is or not. So I'm just going to put my 72 spinach down here. That's an easy one. I'm going to put 72 spinach. So whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to add 72 to the end of that. First, I got to figure out how many carrots we have. So we got five rows. So I'm just going to put row, 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 row. Now, I'm not going to draw 16 little lines on each one. That's going to be kind of a pain in the neck. So I'm just going to write the number 16 on each. And these are my carrots. So I'm just going to put C, 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 C. So I've got options here. If I want, I can just make a huge addition problem. I can do 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 72. I would get an answer. Or I can multiply because repeated addition is another way for you to do multiplication. If you're not really comfortable with the multiplication standard, you can use just repeated addition because that's another way to look at it. That means five sets of 16, but let's Let's look at this 16 times five. Let's use our multiplication. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. So this first way is gonna be what we call 
partial products. And by partial products, that means we don't regroup or anything. We just go ahead and put each product down, and then we add them at the bottom. So we start with 5, and we start with 6. So we we'll always start right here. So 5 times 6 is 30. Then we're just going to put those both right here. And then next, we're going to multiply this 5 times this 1. But this 1 really isn't a 1. It's a 10, because it's a 1 in the 10's place. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a 0 in that ones place in that second row to make sure that I start my answer here in the tens place because this is really a 10. So 5 times 1 is 5, so that's going to be 50. So it looks like my answer is going to be 80. Now, how do we do that with what they call the standard? So this is partial products. And the standard algorithm is just with uh, the normal way, the quick way. But as you can see, you can use partial products. You can use repeated addition. And so I'll just do 16 times 5. You multiply 5 times 6 again, but you only put one digit down. You're going to carry that 3 over here above the tens place. The problem is you got to multiply and then add. So we're going to multiply this now. 5 times 1 is 5. Then we've got to add this 3 that we brought over from the 30. So 5 plus 3 is 8. And there we go. We've got 80. So 80 is not an answer over here, but it shouldn't be because we haven't even added in our 72. So let's add in our 72 spinach. And that's just a simple addition. We're going to get 152. So that's going to be our answer. Now, how do we get some of these other answers? Well, if I don't know to multiply, if I just do 72 plus 16, if I just take my two numbers and add for whatever reason, well, that's going to give me 88. So that's this one. And then if I decide, oh, I need to add this 5, that's going to be 93, so that's this one. And 122 is just 16 times 5 without any regrouping. Okay, we're going to work on some uh, guided practice problems. Go ahead and follow along as I read. It says, Raina made three quilts for her dolls. She used two different colors of fabric squares. The design for one quilt is shown below. If she uses the same design, or if the same design was used for all three quilts, how many total fabric squares did Raina use? So uh, use my cubes, I'm gonna circle important information. I would uh, circle that there are three quilts and uh, the two different colors aren't important because it shows it right down here in the bottom. But uh, I think the design, I'm gonna need the design in order to solve the problem. Next thing I'll do is I'll underline the question. And the question is how many total fabric squares did she use? And uh, I'm going to circle fabric squares too, because that's what we're trying to find out is the fabric squares. Uh, box in some operational clues. Okay. Uh, I don't really have anything here uh, per se that really tells me, uh, maybe except for right here, total, the word total. I'm trying to find out the total uh, amount of fabric squares. So I'm going to do some evaluating. Okay. Uh, the numbers that I have, I have some quilts. I have some fabric squares right here, and I'm trying to find out fabric squares. My labels are different. So when my labels are different, typically that's going to be multiplication division because I can't add and subtract uh, to make something different than what it started out as. So, uh, and uh, I think I also see total down here in my question. So that means I'm trying to find out the total amount of something. So it's going to be more than three or it's going to be more than however many squares that are here. So there's two operations to make things larger. That's addition and multiplication. And I started multiplication twice. And um, you know, if I was using the get strategy, I'll go ahead and use a get strategy, even though I know I'm going to be multiplying. G, E, T. So I know I have three groups. That's going to be the quilts. Uh, the number that are in each group, I'm going to figure out from right here. And I'll do that really quick. So uh, how many uh, are in each group? There are 20 in each group because I could go through here and count each one individually, or I could say there's one, two, three, four rows with one, two, three, four, five in each row. Uh, and the total is what I'm trying to find out, the total number of uh, squares that are going to be in three quilts. So I'm going to start to solve now. What, uh, what am I going to, what, um, 
expression can I use to solve this? That's right. I could uh, I could use the expression three times twenty to solve. What is three times twenty? Okay, well, let's check and see. Uh, I'm going to use grouping to do this. So there's three quilts, three quilts, and there's twenty in each. So I'm going to put two X's. Okay, or I could have did one, two, three. I could have did base 10 blocks to do it. Uh, so that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So there's going to be 60 total. So my correct answer would be J. We'll double check this using the standard algorithm, and I'll do that right over here. So that's 20 times 3. 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 2 is 6 equals 60. So 60 is our correct answer. Okay, go ahead, follow along as I read. It says Leonard bought display boards for his collection of 50 state quarters. Each display board had five rows with two quarters in each, two quarter slots in each row. Leonard purchased enough display boards to hold exactly the number of quarters in his collection. Which picture shows the display boards Leonard used to display his quarters? Uh, I'm going to use cubes. I'm probably not going to have to use all the aspects of cubes. Okay, uh, but I am going to circle important information. I have 50 state quarters. And then I uh, have five rows with two quarters in each row. Underline the question. Um, says, which picture shows the display boards Leonard used to display his quarters? Uh, I'm going to box in some operational clues. Uh, the one thing I'm going to box in is uh, the word exact, exactly. Uh, because, I mean, he could use a lot of different display boards here, but uh, we're looking for the one that has exactly the right amount of quarters in there. So I'm evaluating, and um, I'm really going to evaluate and solve at the same time. Uh, I'm evaluating. I'm looking for one that has five rows with two quarters in each row. So I'm looking for an array uh, of five by two. And um, we're going to go ahead and look at our answer choices really quick because that's how we're going to solve it because we're looking for the, the one that does display his quarters correctly. So uh, answer choice A. Could answer choice A be the, uh, the way he displayed his quarters? Uh, no, it is not. Okay, it is not the way he displayed his quarters. Why is it not the way he displayed his quarters? Well, the the easiest way to do this is uh, it doesn't have exactly 50. Okay, because I see that I have two rows of five right here. So that means there's 10 on each page. So that'd be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So this one has 60 60 quarters on that, so that could not be his quarters or his, the way he displayed his quarters. B, could B be the way he displayed his quarters? I think it may be. Uh, I'm going to put a question mark here. You know, sometimes you'll put an M right there. I'll put both in there. So I think that may be it because uh, it does have 10 on each page. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So there are 50 quarters there. And I do see five rows with two in each row. So I think that's probably going to be my answer. So uh, pretty much we're pretty sure the rest are not going to be it. But we'll go ahead, look at C. Why is C not the way uh, he displayed his quarters? Okay, well, we said it's not the way. And it's not the way because uh, there are 50 quarters there. There's five rows of five. And, and that's the reason why it's not, because it should be five rows of two. So it would be, it would look more like a, uh, this would have been a page, that would have been a page, this would have been a page, and that would be a page, and that'd be a page. But there are 50, but uh, it's not, it doesn't have the correct array, it doesn't display the correct way. And answer choice D, why is answer choice D not correct? Okay, it's not correct because there's 45 quarters there. 
And uh, you said there's exactly, there's not enough room there to put all these cores because there's 15 in each. 15 plus 15 plus 15 equals 45. So answer choice B is our correct way to display the quarters. Okay, it's time to complete your independent work. Uh, I'm going to put um, something in, uh, some, something for you to print and work the problems out if you want to print and work your problems out. Um, typically, uh, third graders do better when they have something to write on and show their work. Uh, and But make sure you do the blue puzzle piece with the day's date on there. And, uh, you know, take your time, do your very best. If you have any questions, though, email your teacher or send them a message in Schoology. And just remember, take your time, do your very best. Best of luck to you.